Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to show you this uh, cool little boys toy sort of thing. Low cost, but really lovely quality. Just something I bought for fun for looking up at the stars. Pretty much everyone was saying, don't buy a telescope if you're just looking for something low cost, buy some binoculars. A lot of cheap telescopes are really horrible. Also because you get the view from both eyes. I've always been into astronomy and sort of uh, watching videos and documentaries and podcasts. The Hubble Space Telescope shows us 5,500 galaxies in a patch so small that it is only 1 32 millionth of the sky's total size. The observable universe has in it 100 billion galaxies. Each galaxy has some 100 billion stars within it. Each of these stars has its own planets and moons. That is a lot of shit. I won't ever be able to get the same sort of views as we get from you know, the Hubble Space Telescope or something, but we can get some really beautiful views through some binoculars and there is this huge difference between seeing a photo of it on the internet and seeing it in person. Well, <laughs> about as about as much in person as you can see the stars. I'm really pleased that I bought this and I'm glad that I didn't go for something bigger like a bigger telescope or bigger binoculars because these you can use handheld without a tripod although they do have a tripod connection which I'll show you but they're also easy to carry. So they're under a kilogram, like a 5D without a lens. So I just put my uh, photography strap on there, which is just my DIY one. I think I need to make a video about this because this is super comfortable and has no buckles or anything. Super simple, yet super comfortable. And that's just you know, it's one that I made myself. And that's using the C-Loop, which I love just because of how easy it is. And it's also kind of good looking and stuff and nice high quality, but I love how easy it is to connect and disconnect from my camera without any sort of tools or quick release plates or whatever. Just simple, compact, doesn't scratch my camera, doesn't dangle as much as some other ones. So I love this one, have done for a while. 10 is the focal length of this, really nice while staying nice and portable. And 50 is the diameter of the front piece of glass there. So uh, 10 by 50 is what most people recommended as a good starter set for binoculars or binoculars that you want to be carrying around with you, which I do. You know, I'm not going to be carrying around a telescope while I'm out, you know, walking around with my cat or something. There are not many stores where I live that sell binoculars. There's one hunting shop, which I wouldn't give my money to anyways, just because I'm against hunting. But uh, I went in there just to see the binoculars they had and the range started from 400 pounds. So it ended up working out really well because I had some vouchers for a shop called Argos because I returned a super nasty blender and I got vouchers instead of a refund. Now they didn't have a Nikon that I could try out. The view from this is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm not worried about the Nikon one and the Nikon one was more expensive anyways. These are crazy sharp. Even when there is chromatic aberration, the line is so thin. A bit of an extreme example of some chromatic aberration. You can see on one side, there's a purple fringe because of the very, very bright background and very dark object in front of it. And uh, usually on the opposite side, we would see a green fringe. We see this even with really expensive photography lenses. So when I was looking online, I really wasn't sure if the 10 by 50 would be enough for me. So I'm able to actually stand over here at the other side of the room and uh, focus at four and a half meters, which is the minimum focus of this, and actually see individual specks of dust and very easily count them on the edge of the desk there, on the front edge of the desk. That's just kind of mind blowing to me. I did not think that I would be able to get that much detail. From 50 meters away or 150 feet, I can see ants on a wall. I can see them very small, but I can see them. Up to a 16th of a mile, I would be able to count blades of grass. So around uh, 100 meters, really nice solid build quality. And actually, I wish I could show you guys my first ever set of binoculars, which, well, I've only had one set before this, were some fairly small ones. I'm probably around that big, just kind of, kind of smallish. And they were also made by Olympus. I got them when I was a kid and I don't have those anymore to show you, but they did last around 15 years before they broke, which I guess is pretty good for uh, something that wasn't super expensive. And these were marketed as having a 25 year warranty. Now I think for most people using these as they are would be totally fine. And I would say just sort of get a nice strap for them if you want to. The strap that came with them works fine, but it's just not super nice. Some people might enjoy this with a tripod as well. I mean, it does make the view more stable, obviously. And maybe for really long periods of just staring up at the sky or something, or staring through someone's window, you know, if you're a pervert, that's totally fine by me. And then the connection point between the camera and the tripod 
is going to want to be something like a little ball head or a little friction arm or something like that because the connection here is sort of a little bit sunk inwards. This is just, you know, a flash bracket from e-image. Most quick release blades are just a bit too large, you know, because this isn't flat. So you want something quite slim. And luckily this works great with my uh, connection here for my strap. For me, if this is good enough to carry a camera on my shoulder, then it's also good enough to carry my binoculars. And you might also want to consider something like my Giotto's tripod, which has an extension arm, or getting an extension arm separately for your tripod, which is now something that you can get, which I've not seen before, but it's something quite recent. And so I'll link to those down below. So it would allow you to just sort of lie down and relax and have this just sort of floating above your eyes. Most people would be totally fine using this handheld. It's not a must to get a tripod. Just to get a bit more stability, have your hands over here instead of over here. The one criticism that I have about this is that if I sort of squish my eyes sort of uh, quite close, then it blocks the airflow and this can get fogged up a bit. My eyelashes can leave little lines on there, but if I don't squeeze my face into it, then it's fine and my eyelashes don't touch it. This came with a little carry case, mildly padded, bit of Velcro to close it, lens caps, which I won't be using. I don't put lens caps on my lenses that cost like 500 pounds and so I'm just not that worried about this. Here it is in my crumbler bag which uh, can go around my waist. Uh, it looks a bit dorky but I don't mind. Uh, or you can carry this as a sling bag and it's uh, really good, been using this for years. So here we're looking at it through a camera and so it's not looking as good. This is not hazy when looking at it just with your eyes. So here I'm focused on the middle branch thing right there. You can see it's not super perfect but if I look just with my eyes it looks gorgeous and super sharp. So to give you an idea of how big of an image circle you can see when you're looking through the binoculars then uh, here I've done a test and I've compared the binoculars to just sitting in front of a television but I don't have a television so I just compared it to my big softbox. So this is what it looks like. It looks like you're sitting in front of a TV that is 59 inches across and 59 inches from top to bottom because you see a big, big circle and sitting 55 inches away from it. So 59 inch TV, 55 inches away. That's what it looks like. So very, very big. And that's 150 centimeters in metric. And then this is your adjustment for getting the distance between your eyes correct. This is your focus wheel, which you can reach from either side, from the bottom or the top. And I can even focus with my eyes rather than focus with this, although that has you know a limited amount of movement, only a few meters. So mostly you wanna focus with this and then you can still look around back and forth and actually focus on items back and forth with your eyes, which I think is pretty awesome. And the final thing that I love about these is that when you're looking through them, it looks 3D. And I mean, actually like watching a 3D movie. So there is just a depth to everything you're seeing. This little adapter came out not a 3 8 inch on the other side. It's something else. I think it's an M8. So in general, you want to leave it in. But a knife just in that little slot right there. And I just tightened that really, really well, and that is not gonna come out again. And this is the little cap that screws onto there. Although personally, I won't be using that. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Of course, if you wanna support the channel, you can buy this through the links down below from Amazon, eBay, and B&H. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.